Okay, guys. I'm going to come on. Um, I told you guys I was going to be uploading a few videos for you guys. Um, so those are these videos from the iPad that you're watching. And um, I'm sorry that it's in this format. My son has an iPad. Uses my iPad still because his iPad not synced. So he uses mine and he be doing some weird stuff with it and I don't know. So I don't know how to turn it back. You know, so I'm sorry it's not this way because it won't turn that way. It's just this way. So I look a little bit darker than what I am. And I do have on clothes. Okay? So don't nobody think nothing crazy. I'm going to just come on as quickly as possible and give you guys these words. Um, I really just want to combine all of them together, but God is telling me to separate them. And I'll just give you guys, um, I'll just title it in the video where we came from, okay? So, um, I just thank God. I'm, I'm going to say this prayer for all these videos, this video and the videos after. Lord, bless us. Bless your people. Thank you for touching minds and hearts. Thank you for this word, God. Bless me and thank you that this word is falling on good ground in Jesus' name. I do pray. Amen. So this message is going to be titled, and don't mind my lips, it was kind of chapped, or my, my um, eyelashes. Just don't worry about that. Just focus on the word, okay? <laughs> Not saying you worried about it. It's, you know, whatever. So this message is titled, um, Get Into Position Because God Is Coming. And then he gave me a garbage day analogy. Like currently where I am, even though I'm moving very shortly, Currently where I am, our garbage days are Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? Um, like where I was living before this in my own apartment, the garbage day, um, I think it was twice a week or once a week, something like that in the middle of the week. But today was garbage day and then my private time, my devotional time, you know, as I was just being refreshing and everything like that. Um, don't mind the, that's, that's, I think that's a fire truck or something. I'm part in you know, I'm, I'm parked or whatever. I just finished lunch or whatever, a quick lunch. So, um, God was just showing me, you know, this word and he said, get into position because God is coming. And he gave me a garbage day analogy. Now this is going to be two different parts. Okay. Um, when you know that the garbage man is going to run and we're going to, I'm going to give you guys scriptures for all these just flowing. I don't have no notes. I only have what the message is called. And that's it. He's giving me the even the scripture reading along the way, okay? For these particular words. These are like the fresh ones. So, um, so when you know that the garbage man is coming, you're going to put your garbage out to the road, right? You're going to put your... It feels so weird that I'm looking at you guys like this when I'm looking straight. But, okay, whatever. So, um, it's the way this camera's turned, but... But you know that the garbage man is coming or the garbage woman is coming. You're going to have your garbage to the road because they're only going to come certain amounts of time out the week. And then especially like if, it's a, if it falls on a holiday, which is not a holiday today, but I'm saying if it falls on a holiday, then it may lapse. So what God was showing me for many of you, there's two groups of you. There's one group of you that need to get in position because God wants to clean house. It's a train going by. I hope y'all can still hear me. I'm just going to continue forward because I have a lot to release with these different words. And then I still have to do homework. But I'm hoping you guys can still hear me. So um, so the first group is, is, is our people that need to get their hearts in order. You need to get your hearts in order. You need to get your house in order. You need to get your mind in order. It's not saying that you're not saving. You don't love the Lord. But you know that there are some things that God has been telling you that he wants you to clean up. He wants to clean house in your life. He wants, um, he just needs you to start. And that could be anything. That could be, um, thank you, Lord. That could be, um, um, you 
beginning to exercise or eat certain ways or your attitude or just your attitude or get deeper into his presence or give up a certain situation, a person, an opportunity or job that he's been telling you or it could be that he's beginning to tell you to begin to do things. It could be that he's telling you to begin something new. It could be that he's telling you not to be fearful, walk in your faith, walk in your authority. It could be that he's telling you to take a, the, the, the real demeaning and authority that he's giving you over the house. It could be that he's telling you to take the leap of faith. It could be that he's telling you to trust him more. Um, whatever it is, if I'm naming it or not, it could be for you to go apply for the job or start the business or start the ministry. Or it could just simply be for you to forgive. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. It could be for you to clean up your room. I mean, it could be anything. Whatever God has been telling you and constantly telling you, he's telling you to clean house. It could be for you to release old seasons of your life. You could be in a great season of your life, experience something great, but you're holding on to past things and that's weighing you down emotionally or mentally or it's boxing you in or it could be where those things or situations or experiences or people are boxing God in in your life and God is saying with that get into position because God is coming so just like we prepare when the, uh, the garbage person is coming to take the garbage God wants you to prepare for him to come clean house so that's the first part is nothing wrong with that God chastise and rebukes and disciplines those that he loves. A lot of times warning comes before destruction, right? We are in this, this sinful nature. We are in this human state. We have the Holy Spirit who's over all that, but it's not saying that we're not going to deal with things in this carnal nature. You know, it's not going to be perfected all the way until we get in, into eternity. You understand this world that we're in, this flesh that we're in, you guys understand what I'm saying. So that's the first group um, the second group are the people that are ready. It's not saying they're perfect, but they are ready. They are in position and you just need to be in position to get ready because God is getting ready to, to drop a blessing off to you or God is getting ready to move you from where you are to where he wants you to be. Excuse me. God is getting ready to usher you in your new season because you have been prepared because you did uh, you did obey on the last level that God told you and you did clean house. You did do everything God was telling you to do. You are in line alignment with him. It's not where you turn in an incomplete spiritual homework or emotional homework or mental or financial or physical homework, so to speak. The homework represents your seasons and assignments and different things that you're in. You already did what God told you to do on that level. Some of you, it was difficult, but God gave you the strength. Some of you, because you obeyed so quickly, he gave you such a grace that... Even if it was difficult, you passed the test and you went to the next level, okay? So he's getting ready to 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 take you to the next level because you are in position. But the important part is whether you're on either side, I'm praying for you, but whether you're on either side, God loves you enough and needs you to, to stay in position and get in that position to get ready for him, right? When children are um, knowing that they have to go to school, they're coming from different parts of the neighborhood. Some of them are coming from different... Um, um, places that they live in different things like that. But depending on where their bus stop is and that route, they got to be there at a certain time, like back in high school, um, middle school too, but really back in high school, like we used to have to get up, I used to get up like six o'clock in the morning, sometimes five 30 in the morning. And I would clean up the house before school and after school, I would clean up the house. Well, I would go to work after school with some, what, depending on which year I was in in high school or I would just do nails after school because I was doing that back then too in my room or whatever. Or I would just be doing some other stuff, okay? So, um, but this is a serious point for real. So, like, I would get up in the morning and I would have to clean up and prepare and get dressed and stuff like that and um, walk to the bus stop. The bus stop was maybe like 10, 15 minutes away. But if I'm waiting on a friend at that time, it may be a little bit longer because... I'm going to meet them by their house, and then we're going to walk to the bus stop together, and then we go to the bus stop. Now, it was really dark. It's like 6 o'clock in the morning. You know, we got to be the, to school soon, you know, but then the sun is going to come out. So, you got to just be in position. Like, even when you go to the grocery store, and you you there's a certain line you're going to get in. So, if you got 10 items or less, you may want to get in the 10 items or less line. Some people don't feel like getting in line. Some people want to get in the line, the self-serve line, if you like me. I just want to get in and out. Sometimes I get in the line behind people. But if I'm in a hurry or I got things to do, I just be in and out. Because I'm quick and I know I'm going to be just in and out. Um, and then some, and then, so it depends on the line. But according to what you have in your basket, that's the line that you're going to get in. 
So God just needs you to be in position because he's coming. And in real life, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. We know that these are the last days. We don't know the day or the hour. We're reading the book of Revelations next month. Um, and I'm sure you guys have already read a lot about that and seeing what's going on in the news and in these times and different things like this. So it's not like it's new news. You know, Jesus Christ don't know the day or hour he's coming, not even the angels, but the Lord knows. And when God tells him to come, he's going to, to have to come. Amen. So we got to be ready. So just get into position to be and do whatever God is telling you to do. You know what God is, is getting you ready for. You know what it's preparing for. And it's not in vain because that garbage may just be sitting there for a couple days or whatever. But when it's time for the garbage truck person to come, they're going to come and, and it's going to clean out. So a lot of you, God needs you to do what he's asking you to do because he needs you to do that. So that could be released so that he can release something fresh inside of you. And then for those that have um, been doing what God is asking you to do, you are you are prepared to receive the blessings, the opportunity, the answer, the dreams, the vision, the breakthrough, the divine manifestation, the answer prayer that he has for you. Amen. So be encouraged by that, whoever that is for. Um, get into position because God is coming. He's coming and you know, um, I'm going to read two scriptures um, and then I'm going to close this. I'm going to try to keep these kind of down. Um, but I'm going to read Zechariah 3 and I'm going to read about, um, and remember I didn't really have no notes, just only the... Um, just only the title. I want to read about the wise and foolish virgins. Okay, let me find out where that is. I want to read the, the wise and foolish virgins. Just please give me a minute because I don't have... Okay, thank you, Lord. It's right here. I want to read the parable of the ten virgins, the wise and foolish virgins, okay? That's Matthew 25. If you're taking notes, please write this down because I'm probably not going to... um. Okay, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Please write that down. And then we're going to be reading Zechariah 3. So the parable of the ten virgins says, um, and you guys know on the phone when I do lies, I normally flip it so you guys can read with me. But because I'm on the iPad, which is better for me right now where I am with these few days, let me just read into your ear gates, okay? Hold on one second. At that time, this is coming from the New International Version. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. We know that five represents grace. So it's equal, in, it's equal in ten. I forgot what ten represents. But I'm going to get back into that, that Bible numerology. I told y'all that. So the foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. Right? Um, and if this is ministering to you, this particular message... Um, I want you to read Mark 4. I'm not going to read Mark 4, but make a note of that and read that. And that's going to tie into this as well. Mark chapter 4, okay? So 4, reading down of Matthew 25. So the wise, however, took oil and jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. See, it's about being in position. It's about being ready for the Lord, for what the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, wants to do in your life. What the Lord God Almighty wants to do in your life, what Jesus Christ, what God needs to do in your life, being open to what Holy Spirit is showing you and telling you because they're telling you those things for a reason. Okay? So they all woke up, right, and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. See, do you see the difference between those that were prepared and those that weren't prepared, even though they still was on the same line? So, so no, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. This is why the Bible let us know. Not this particular scripture, but Holy Spirit is reminding me of this. We got to work out our own salvation every day with fear and trembling. We got to encourage one another, exalt one another. We all have different gifts and talents and callings on our life. Work your lane. Work your lane well. Work while it's still yet day till the ground. Right? So they're like, no, I, we can't do that because if I give this to you, what am I going to have left? 
So instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, they thought they had more time. They thought they had more time for you on weekly devotional list. The, our movie night for this week was Rapture Ready. Was it this week or last week? Going by so fast, but it was either this week or last week. I think it was this week. It was, it was Rapture Ready. Check it out on YouTube if you guys haven't um haven't saw that. It's um Maverick Movies uploaded it. So while while they're on their way to buy the oil, somebody said buy the oil. The bridegroom arrived. He came at a time when they didn't expect. The garbage man came at a time when they didn't expect. Jesus came at a time they didn't expect. God is going to release certain things and work this out for you. Some of you may know the time, but some of you don't. Some of you, you just got to hold on in faith. You know it's coming, you don't know exactly when. You got to be ready because it may happen at a time where you don't expect. So the bridegroom arrived. So the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet. Right? The wedding banquet is also mentioned in the book of Revelation. And the door was shut. Right, 11 through 13. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. See, it's not about religion. It's about relationship, personal relationship. Therefore, it says, that's not what it says. I'm just telling you guys that. So it says, therefore, keep watch because you do not, do not know the day or the hour. Okay, so Matthew 25, 1 through 13, Mark 4 for you that need to read in your private time. Let me read Zechariah um, 3. And then I'm going to close. Okay. And for you that needed this message, another one that you can read aside from Mark is, um, I'm only going to put the main ones that we read today. I'm not going to put all these that I'm telling you. That's why I'm, I'm telling you guys to write them down. I'm only going to put the two main ones today, which is Zechariah 3 and Matthew um, 25. 1 through 13 okay so these other ones i've been giving y'all like mark 4 and revelation because i may not remember this i didn't write it down i encourage you to read it you could read um uh revelation chapter 2 um that's to the church in ephesus to the church in smyrna to the church in pergamum to the church in thyatira it talks about what the spirit is saying to the different churches then you could read so re read revelations 2 and 3 of this message is ministering to you Excuse me, whatever side you are on is going to minister to you in some way. Okay, Holy Spirit is going to give you insight into this. And then also read Revelation 3 uh, to the church in Sardis, to the church in Philadelphia, to the church in Laodicea. So read Mark 4, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Um, if you want to read extra, you can. Revelation 2 and 3 um, and also um, Zechariah 3, which I'm going to read that to you right now. Okay, and I'm going to read, I'm going to read all of Zechariah 3, then we're going to close, okay? So, this is, this one is really for those that are opening up their hearts to God, are saying, God, okay, I'm open to whatever you're telling me to do for this season of my life, okay? So, it's talking about clean garments for the high priest, also deliverance, healing, just being obedient to obey whatever God telling you to do. Lay down what he's telling you to lay down and, and go after what he's telling you to pursue, okay? And be open to whatever he's telling you to pursue. So clean garments for the high priest. Then he showed me Joshua. And, and um, some translation says, Jeshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan, the accuser, the devil, right? Lucifer. Satan standing at his right side to accuse him because we know that the, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. Right. Um, I had gave you guys some pointers on that in one of these thumbnails about the different voices of God and also sent it to you guys on weekly devotional some weeks ago about how the devil voice do you and how God's voice do you and how you can discern the difference. Like God is not going to be condemning you and accusing you. That's going to be the devil. God will convict you. His Holy Spirit will convict you you know because he wants to convict, convict you to godly repentance so that you can turn from that and move in a direction that he needs you to re remove the satan is just going to best be beating you down god is not going to beat you down you may get a little whooping and a little spanking but he ain't just going to be continually beating you down with something that he forgave you for or released you for that's why he said your sins are are removed as far as the east is from the west okay so let me finish um so Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Okay, is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? 
Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin. That's what God has sent to somebody. And I will put rich garments on you. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the, while the angel of the Lord stood by. The angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in my ways and will keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts, and I will give you a place among these standing here. Listen, O high priest Joshua and your associates seated before you who are men symbolic of things to come. I'm going to bring my servant the branch. See the stone I have set in front of Joshua. There are seven eyes or facets on that stone, on that one stone. I'm sorry. And I will engrave an inscription on it, says the Lord Almighty. And I'll remove the sin of this land in a single day. That's what God is saying to you when you feel like it's so unbearable or it's too much. Or God, I'm dealing with all this weight, all this pressure. How am I going to make it through this? How am I going to get through this mentally, emotionally? God, how am I going to keep pressing through spiritually? God, how am I going to physically get through this? God, how am I going to endure it? God to say, I can do it. Okay? You just got to be in his presence and let God do what he want to do in your life. So in that day 10, and I'm closing out this, each of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine and fig tree, declares the Lord Almighty. And with that, I pray y'all were blessed. I give God all the glory. I'm grateful to just be a messenger and release this word to you. If this video or any of these videos on this channel bless you, please like, please share them. If it bless you, I'm sure it's going to bless somebody that you're connected to. Um, And just thank you for watching the video. Hold this in your heart, believe it, receive it, claim it by faith in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless.